All right, so I'm not, again, I'm not going to start with my usual intro. Um, it's why it's so serious show. Jesse Morrison, Matt Kling, Mallory Schnell, Evan Oshwitz. We're going to start serious today, so I, d I don't go into my intro when, when we start super serious. Um, first off, there's an elephant in the room. We're obviously a Blaze Radio show at, at our core, um, even though we sometimes record shows that are different from Blaze Radio. Um, but our station manager is no longer being um, recognized as the station manager of Blaze Radio after uh, she tweeted uh, an offensive tweet that we do not condone on this show. And we believe we that Black Lives Matter, and we, uh, we are against racism, and we are against violence as well. Yes. Um, and so that brings us to the next, you know, unfortunate event of 2020. Well, there was four of them since we've last had our show. Um, and I'll start with the biggest name of, or maybe the biggest name. I mean, you could, you can always, you can argue that the, uh, the two of the other ones were just as big. Um, but Chadwick Boseman, the, the actor, famously 42, Black Panther, you know, huge movie star. Nobody knew that he had stage four, um, or not, I don't know if it was stage four. It was stage four. It was stage four. He had four, he had cancer for four years, colon cancer. And so that took him out. And I just, you know, I, he's one of my, he was one of my favorite actors, um, 42. I remember seeing 42 and it was the first time I'd ever heard of him. Um, and I was like, man, this guy is a really good actor. He's going to get some really good roles upcoming. And lo and behold, he did and got Black Panther, which, you know, Black Panther is just such a, a monumental movie. And it's so, it, it was just, it was just a, it was a Marvel movie, but like, a, like the acting was really good. Like, which sometimes with those Marvel movies, it's like hit or miss. And I thought that it, that, that one was just insane because it was him and Michael B. Jordan and they were just so great. And it sucks that he's, you know, it's just 2020, 43 years old and, you know, just kind of shocks the world. Uh, it's kind of I don't know how much more you can say. I mean, my introduction to Chadwick was from Black Panther. I didn't see 42 because I'm not a huge baseball fan. I understand it's more than just a baseball movie, but you know, I knew him as, as the guy from Black Panther. And obviously that's a timeless classic that people will talk about for many years to come. And um, his influence uh, will only grow, I think, after this. But yeah, we lost a good one. And I, I'm just like kind of glad to see that he has some real people on his side because I've awesome. never heard about the cancer thing. He got diagnosed in 2016, never said anything about it. No one ever leaked that information. So clearly this was a guy who uh, people respected and surrounded by good people. And it, it's just unfortunate that he had to die so young. All right. So moving on, um, I guess I'll just go by, you know, level of impact. Um, mm -hmm. This morning, I woke up to John Thompson, the former Georgetown coach, the legend. Um, he won. He died this morning at 78. That's why I'm wearing the towel. He would always have a towel over his right shoulder. So that's why. That's I why the TNT people, commentators were wearing a towel. Yeah, okay. The TNT people were wearing a towel, so I thought I would, I would do the same. Um, great coach, great legacy. Um, they what I thought was extremely interesting that they were talking about on TNT is how you know. I believe he was the first black coach to win a national championship. Um, and so, but he, he didn't like want to hear that because he said that, you know, he knows that there were coaches that weren't given the opportunity in the past that would have won that national championship. So he doesn't like want to be acknowledged. So he didn't like want to be acknowledged at that. So I just thought that that was very interesting. Um, and yeah, he was just, he was a great coach. I think four, Four Final Fours, a national championship. Obviously, he coached Ewing and Iverson and a couple other really great mm -hmm. players. Um, his son went on to coach Georgetown and yeah. had a lot of success with like Jeff Green and Roy Hibbert. Um, and now, and now uh, Ewing's coaching that team. Just saying that hopefully Ewing can turn around Georgetown. They didn't have a really good year. No, yeah, they didn't. Um, and yeah, I hope that because I like when Georgetown's good. When Georgetown's good, it's good for college basketball. They're one of the story programs. Absolutely. Also. And, and, you know, after that FGCU loss, they've kind of never been the same. So I hope they, hope they can get back to the, to the ways of John Thompson so that, you know, you know, that they can, they can get back to that and honor him in that, in that way of getting back to, you know, the, the glory years. Um, but and then another massive force in college basketball history died as well. 
and he wasn't the favorite of Sun Devil fans, but Lute Olsen, the former U of A head coach, legendary, turned that program into what it is today. Um, won a national title, uh, went to four Final Fours as well, uh, went to a ton of tournaments. Uh, I, the thing that I didn't know is his funny commercials back in the day. I don't know if you guys heard about, saw those. Yeah, he had some really, really funny commercials that aired in Arizona. Um, yeah, and there was tons of support. There was tons of support from ASU people, which I thought was really nice. I thought, I thought ASU people showed so much class in this, especially like, you, you know, people that faced off against him and people that worked with the, the school. Like, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just paying respect to someone that's great, even if you didn't, you know, necessarily like them or appreciate them when they were alive. I think it's, like it's, due, it's due time to give them respect when, yes. when somebody dies. All right, and then Clifford Robinson died. He was a former son player, Blazers player. Played for a lot of teams. Yeah. And, a lot of different teams. Yeah, it was, it was sad, though. He was 53 years old. So, you know, 2020 hits again. Uh, but let's get, let's get into the, to the real show because – Yeah, we actually do have, like, non-depressing things to talk about. Yes, we, we actually have yeah, non-depressing things. ridiculous things to talk about, too. So yes, – Yes, we do. All right. And let's, and let's start with – yesterday's PGA event and former Sun Devil John Rahm. But more depressing stuff. What? Like, golf is, is like... Eh. <laughs> right, just wait. Our guy won, though, so it was a little less depressing this Look time. at this. Look at this. This is 66 feet to win the to win the tournament. It's a playoff event. Oh, my gosh. A playoff. Bang! Bang! John Rahm. <laughs> yes. By the way, I thought it's J O N Rom, not J O H N Rom. Did he did he change it or something? No, I think it's always been J O H N. It's a fine. Uh, I don't know. You're wrong. You lose your golf fan card. I don't have a golf fan card. I only watch the U.S. Open in the match. I think I'm the only one with a golf fan. If, card. Just, if Jesse can't spell John Rom's name, then he's officially a fake golf fan. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up right now. Now, I don't know why CBS tweeted J-O-H-N, but... Because it's J-O-H-N. Um, then, tell, then tell me Google's wrong. It says from Spain, though. Is that right? Yes. That's a Spanish flag. He's yes, from Spain. From Spain. Yeah. Okay, well, GB, CBS misspelled his John name. Twitter page, J-O-N. Okay, well, then, then it's the fine. He's is wrong, Okay. <laughs> But that's the fine on me. I I apologize. I'm not fining you for anything, okay? That's your golf fan card. Where's Mallory? I'm here. I just need um I just need to slip away for a second. <laughs> okay. Well, big win for ASU, big win for John Rom. Um we very much support that win over Dustin Johnson here. Um, on our show, but yeah, it, like, I like I, Dustin Johnson. Am I allowed to like Dustin Johnson? You, we support Sun Devil alumni. We support Sun Devil alumni. Um, that's that yeah, but, was awesome, and like that. That's like such a huge putt. Like you don't see that. That's one of the best putts I've ever seen in my life. You don't see. Do it in a major. <laughs> <laughs> Do it on the field. I got. I got you there. Do guys. All right. Well, today was baseball's trade deadline as well. There lots was like, stuff. What did you say, Mallory? Lots, lots of trades. Like, why do we like, need to have a trade deadline in a in a sixty game season? Do you just think like, they just allow trades the whole whole year? Exact or no, oh, no okay. trades. So it's like an elimination game, like game seven of a playoff series. You just trade for like an all star player. <laughs> Mallory, put it on the poll. Why the trade deadline exists. Mallory, put it on the poll. Should the trade deadline be after the season? The trade deadline should be the last day of the regular. No, there should be no trade deadlines, no trades. Matt, six Matt, games Matt. what is your opinion on the matter? You, you, My pick, opinion pick, a side. On the matter, pick a side. What do you want? My opinion on the matter is that there should be no trades this year because it's such a short season. But and there has to be. Well, no trades, period. However, how do you I'm not have a trade deadline though? It's just because just because of COVID, like COVID's gonna ruin the trade deadline. I don't want COVID to ruin. How about the September thirteenth? Not with the deadline itself. It's that teams are literally tearing down their rosters when it's yes. like the equivalent of like a third of a season. 
Like, how can you tell if your team is built to win or not based on what has it been, like 30 games? No, not I, I totally support teams going for it. This is the year to go for it. There's exactly, but if you're – okay, if you're a team like the – Diamondbacks, for example, who sold off a ton of players today. Yeah, you've lost like 10 or of 11 or whatever it is. But over a full season, you wouldn't be out of it. So just because the schedule's shorter doesn't mean you need to tear down your roster like they did. I totally get teams like the Padres going for it. That makes perfect sense to me. It's the other end of the spectrum that I don't understand. The D-backs aren't working, though. Like, they, but, they try to – no, the, here's the deep what the D-backs do, because – they're buyers and sellers every year at the trade deadline. The D-backs want to make sure that they're somewhat competitive, but also rebuilding at the same time. I don't understand their front office. It seems sense. like to me, it seems like they just want to be mediocre. Because if you were going to tear it down anyway, why did you sign Mad Bum? Like, just, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Same with like the Zach Granke thing. It just doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Like, That's my the, point. The Zach Granke <laughs> thing worked out one season. When they went Zach Granke was really good for the D backs. Zach Granke, that was like the best thing. Yeah. That's like the best deal they've made. So, but still, like, I don't get it. I I just don't. And I apologize for eating pizza. I made it and I really wanted to see. Look look what I did. Look at this. Look at that. I understand trading Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray is having a horrible year. And you only hope. Not Robbie Ray, my favorite. Why is he your favorite, Mallory? Just his name. But like um, Archie Bradley is is gone, and Archie Bradley one good bullpen arm. Like why trade him? Now now who's their uh, they who's traded their... their other good bullpen arm too? Nathan, yeah, yeah. All right, well I want to go through these deals because I've got like because I've got, I'm not gonna go through all of them because there's a lot, but I'm gonna go through a lot of them. Um, the, uh, the big let's do the big let's, let's be real. Yeah, and I'm gonna go through the funny moves too. Like Mets getting Todd Frazier back to the back again. Like Wait, that. What team was he on? Right. The Rangers. He was on the Rangers. Holy crap! Was like for people who played like almost every game, he was the Rangers batting average leader with a 241 average. The Rangers have forgotten how to hit, like across the board. Maybe I it's thought they, ball, they can't hit in that ballpark. It's not the ballpark. It's because everyone is cold, not just the home run hitters. So it's not the ballpark. It's probably the hitting coach and the players all having down years at the same time. But I thought they were going to trade Gallo, Lynn, like everyone today. So I'm surprised it was just Minor and Frazier that ended up getting sent out. Kevin Pillar to the Rockies because the Rockies need more outfielders. And, I mean, it's just, it's just another good move. By, like, Colorado just knows how to, like, pick up good hitters and the guy's going to just like it was a borderline playoff team right? yeah they're going to make the playoffs i think I, they can, like yeah. they're not going to do anything because they don't i don't know what's up with their their pitching's bounced back a little bit but i don't know i don't know how how i feel about this i think it's a good move but it's like it's just stocking up on what they already have because that lineup's insane well david Dahl is injured right now so it might be as a stop gap until he comes back yeah um david phelps to the phillies matt um, well, we need bullpen arms, so that's 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 a good move on the Phillies' part. By the way, the Phillies and the Marlins now have the same record, 15-15, and 15, sitting three games behind the Braves. Starling Marte to the Marlins is, a, is an interesting one. So the Marlins seem to care about winning. Mallory, are you happy about this? I'm pumped. Go Marlins <laughs> for swimming. <laughs> Robbie Ray, we already talked about that one. Um, Mike Clevenger, I, I thought was really funny um, to the to the Padres. Like that guy has like great numbers, and they're I think they're literally just trading him because he went out and disobeyed COVID. Is it weird that the Indians always trade a good pitcher at the deadline just for no reason? Like they traded Trevor Bauer last year. It didn't hurt their rotation at all. Is the crazy thing they got rid of Kluber, they got rid of Bauer. They got rid of Clevenger, and they're still fine in terms of starting pitching. So yeah. that's some yeah. Shane yeah. Beaver is going to be the Cy Young winner. Yeah. He's going to win the Cy Young. Um, Mike Miner to the A's. I don't know if that's a big deal at all. Miner is still winless this year. He has like a 5-6 ERA. He's 0-7. The Rangers were just trying to get rid of him. They got two like mid-level prospects back from Oakland. Let's, 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 pause uh, that, um, let's pause the trade talk for a second because I have a fact of the day. So can you hit me with the fact of the day sound? Yes, sir. The fact of the day! We want it now! The fact 
of the day. We were talking Shane Bieber. He uh, through the, through his first fifty innings of the season, he had eighty he had eighty two strikeouts. According to Elias Sports Beer, that's the most strikeouts by any starting pitcher through their first fifty innings in baseball history. Wow, that wow. guy is winning the Cy Young Award. Yeah, he's insane. And I that's I, the fact I, of the day. He's a former Lynchburg Hillcat. Um, all right, so the Padres made more moves. They got Austin Nola and a couple other Mariners players. Like, they're, they're, they stocked up on catching because their catching's been bad. Yeah, that, that kind of sums up the biggest of the deals. Um, I, I think the Padres, like, I, I'm, gonna, I'm about to go into a rant about them and what are we doing. Oh, no. Not about them. I'm about to go into a rant on their fans. Oh, no. Um, no, but, please, Jesse. No, because, they don't have a football team. I know, I know, I know, but like they're they're here. You'll you'll see because their fans are mad on their fans are mad about this, and I'm about to just go into them. But I don't know if what are we doing is next. Uh, you forgot a kind of like big deal though. Which one? The Jays also got striplings, so they got two starters and uh, VR. So they're going all in too. They're in a playoff spot right now. They look pretty good. So adding adding those guys might go a long way. You're talking about Toronto? Yeah. No, they. They look like they could make a run, honestly. Boston I like the Orioles today. The uh, the Boston Red Sox have the worst run dif- differential in baseball. With They're minus awful. I predicted this too. Their pitching staff is so bad. It's like the literally the worst pitching staff in the league. Like, yeah, yeah. Workman and Hembry are not that good, and they came over to the Phillies. They're not that good. Like, they're only getting enough. They're only showing that the Red Sox have no pitching evaluation whoever's running that team because they they got rid of Alex Cora before I think Renicky I think Renicky is the manager yes. but Heim Bloom Heim Bloom is a first year GM so he needs time the only thing that he's done is the Mookie trade and we can debate whether he got enough back for wait him. a minute no I'm wrong I'm dead wrong about that my apologies the worst run differential in baseball belongs to the Texas Rangers with a minus an awesome bad. Bad. they're not even in last place yeah, they're not. In love. Yeah, the that's Angels the surprising part. In their division, and they've played two more games, which they've also lost. But they have as many wins as the Angels do, and we know how bad they are. That's I. I poor Mike Trout. Oh, he's so serious. All right, we're getting too serious. The worst record is the Pittsburgh Pirates, but that's predictable. So Matt, Matt, just we're we're getting too serious. So Matt, just lay into me on on whatever I'm doing wrong with fantasy football. This goes for Mallory. I don't know why you're doing anything wrong. You're trying to commission a league. Commissioning a league is a hard thing to do. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's literally the worst. It's my least favorite thing. It's like my least favorite thing to do. I, it's like I don't even know why I do it. It's, it's the same thing with like why, I, why I'm a quote-unquote supreme ruler of the show. It's just because if I didn't do anything, it would ne- we wouldn't even do shows. So I don't have time talk. to edit the shows. I'm sorry. You can edit the show. It takes 15 minutes. I'm sorry. Your job as a commissioner is to collect money and set the draft and make sure that ESPN's computers run properly and, and know which teams are doing well and then give out the money to whoever wins the league. I don't know what, what your problem apparently is or why some people are boycotting a $5 buy-in for a league. Thank you. I'm glad so so can, right can here. you explain the situation, though? Can you explain the situation? Yes. I refuse to pay the $5 yes. to Jesse. No, they refuse to pay the $5 when, like, who, who they, does? Mallory and Jeremy are paying $5. My dad won't even pay the $5. I have to pay the $5 for him, which means that I get his money if he wins. So if, if I'm the only one that, like, if, like, and I feel like that's slightly corrupt, but like at the same time, if I have to get him in the league doing that, then I will. So it's the the no, issue is it's that five dollars like, again. It is five dollars. It's a Starbucks. It's, it's Mallory a goes out to eat. She buys stuff for her room. Jeremy goes out to eat. Like I'm sorry, it's it's five dollars. I get it. Like if, if you really can't afford it because of like the pandemic, I understand. But like. What do, you, what do you want? You want a one dollar buy-in? What do you think this is? Like the grand? I just don't. I just don't want to pay Jesse. Oh my god! Oh, you're not paying me. You're paying whoever wins, unless I win. Which, which in my history of fantasy football, I go to the championship game and lose. So you, will, we, we do not do second and third place gets money. If you're not first, you're last in our league. It's it's a five dollar buy-in. Whoever whoever wins the league, you know what the issue months. the issue you're is not, that you're, 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 you're not paying Jesse. Jesse is just putting the money in his bank account or putting yeah. it in his wallet 
and you know it's part of the cash flow and then when the money comes out the money comes out and it goes to the winner yeah you're not paying me unless i win which is there's i'm i'm hoping for like a 14 to 16 person reserve is what it is that's 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 how that's how commissioners work you don't pay the commissioner you give com- the commissioner money puts it in a reserve and then when championship time time comes he takes the money out of the reserve I'm using the term reserve loosely, you know, it could be a bank, it could be a credit union, could be the middle drawer in his bedroom. Yes, you know? I, I, yes, I have a whole plan for how I'm going to deal with this. Okay, yeah. but what happened last year was that we put money on whether Kelly was being sent home from The Bachelor or not. She was sent home, therefore, Jesse owed me $10. He paid it out! Me, yeah, you gave me what five. What does that do with anything? no. He gave me five and then said the other five was going to be for the fantasy, was going to cover my fantasy team card. This year? And then, oh, no, this look at that one now. No. This year or last year, Mallory? Last year. And then you asked me again for the money when, when that, the bastard thing was supposed to cover it, and your excuse was he ended up with Kelly, so technically you That won. was a joke. I didn't actually want the money back. I, I didn't. It was a joke. So, so it's a dumb argument and move on. It's a very dumb. I'm with I'm with Evan. It's again. It is a five dollar buy in. I got a text. I got a text from my mom. Um, just Venmo Jesse ten dollars for my credit card and stop arguing with him. Which means, five, Jesse, which means Jesse went to my mom to complain five about dollar their buy in. No, no, not Jesse. You're going too far. Five. You're going too like, far. Five dollars. Like, why do you have to contact my mom about it? In. That that's 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 just. Everybody, do it with me. Five. No. No. Five dollar. No. no. Five dollar buy in. <laughs> This is, Love this, Charlie is, this is my next argument about fantasy football is that the fan is that fantasy football brings out the narcissist in people. And I'm saying this because my, my league back home, and I'll get into your new favorite team in a moment, but my league back home where you, where your new favorite team uh, takes part in had, had, we had our draft yesterday and the, the guy who drafted ninth, or I think he drafted ninth, whatever it was, he got, he got Derrick Henry and a lot of not really good players. And he tried to convince everyone that he had a good team, even though we all know he drafted horribly. And then he just decided, you know what? Well, no, his roommate tried to trick him into making a dumb trade. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't work out. We all vetoed it. But um, it just proves to show you that, you know, you turn into a – fantasy football is great. It's fun. It makes you watch 256 football games a year. Um, but you turn to a total narcissist about it. And that is the Let's thing. Out, you just draft a bunch of Dolphins players. <laughs> East strategy. I can't, I can't draft Kalen Balazs this year from the Dolphins. And even well, the- technically, he's still on the Dolphins. Well, yeah, yeah, because they have a real running back now in Matt Breida, so he won't. Evan, are, are you going to show your face? Jordan Howard, too, remember. Yeah, I just didn't think you would want to see me shoving steak into my mouth, so uh, I turned. I mean, I'm eating too, so it's like it's okay. I mean, okay. It's, well, I should I, I go get food? food? We're used so to, we just to do an eating show. You eating, Jesse? It's kind of part of your brand at this point. I'm more of a, you know, I'm kind of the even keel guy. Like I take it seriously, which is take ironic. it seriously. I I am <laughs> the name of the show. Yeah, Breaking I am news. eating. Yeah, Thunder and Rockets are going to a game seven. Yes, two game sevens. We will get to that in, in a, later. But do you have any? Do you have any more comments on how fantasy football is taken way too seriously? And yeah, just, yeah, share your screen. Let me share my screen because because I'm introducing you to your to the show's new favorite football team. Now I'm going to give a little backstory about this football team. This football team in 2016 came in last place in a 10 man league, and when that team came in last place. I had to, uh, this hair right here, this hair right here is dark. That winter, that hair became bleach blonde. Yes. Did, did I not know you yet? You did not know me yet. Oh, because you no. were not at Arizona State yet. So, oh. so during that, uh, so, so I kept that, by the way, for six weeks. I rocked it. I said, bleep it. Let, I'm going to rock this. I'm going to go back to college. It's going to be a big talker. It was a huge talker. I was at parties, whatnot, talking to hold people. Hold on, hold on, Mallory, put it on the poll. Was it a huge talker? Yes. 
The answer is yes. So, so the past couple of years, so that really was rock bottom. So then I decided that officially the Bleach Boys would be the name of this fantasy football team. Now in 2017, the Bleach Boys made the playoffs and uh, lost in the semifinals. In 2018, the Bleach Boys, I believe, barely missed out on the playoffs. But last season, the Bleach Boys won the championship in this league. And now, as we head into 2020, um, the Bleach Boys might have the best team in this league. Take a look at this. So, again, this is a uh, Hold up, hold up real quick, league. real quick. Hold on, hold on. This by the way, this is coming from the guy that was just calling out people for being arrogant about their fantasy football teams. And now he's going to show us his fantasy football team and, and tell us how great it is. So let me, I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy, but go on. Uh, that's what, that, that's my role on this show is I'm, is that I am the senior correspondent and my course Wait, hold up. You, you're, you guys play in the two QB. That's the dumbest thing ever. I hate the two QB. I didn't want it. I, those There's are dumb. This league loses all respect. Yeah, but but look at but you ha get so many points from the two guys that are on this list. All right, with the number one overall pick, I picked this guy. I got this guy at the end of the second round. This I got is, this guy at the top of the third round. Why are why do you have three guys named this guy on your team? I don't understand. <laughs> it's because I'm pointing them to you: McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Travis Kelsey. Uh, yeah, but some people might just be listening to it in the background. So you, you need to say the, <laughs> all three names. Come on, let's let's go. Let's, 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 I work in television. This is a visual medium, Jesse. But anyway, um, I, I, I believe that I drafted a really good team. Uh, and throughout my correspondence, through my weekly appearances, we will be following the Bleach Boys every week as they go toward a second straight championship. Wait, wait, hold on. I never agreed to following your fantasy team. Yes, you did. You, you made me your senior correspondent. That's what, that's yeah, why. But, what, but you're, you're not the senior correspondent of your own fantasy team. Read the, read the contract. There's no contract. If you think Aaron Jones is going to get 20 touchdowns again or whatever he had last year, it's not going to I think he's going to get some yards. Yards too, so it's, it's fine. It's a it's a good team. I think Christian McCaffrey is going to carry the Panthers. Just wait till we get to my league. Wait till we get to my league. I draft someone like Robbie Anderson. He has a great season, and we and I win it all. That's what I think is going to happen. He's their number three receiver. I know, but like I, I always draft a sleeper that does well. Fair enough. So that's a that's good. Yeah. So, all right. What are we doing? That's a good question. What are we doing? Mallory, start. Oh no, I'm I, I never have one prepared. It just it just comes to me. Evan, start. Honestly, you got me stumped too, so I'll just make something up. Um there's a hockey game going on right now between the stars and avalanche. Uh the stars just didn't show up. It they had a chance to knock Colorado out today, and uh, Colorado was starting their third goalie on the depth chart. So the game plan should have been get as many shots on Hutchison as you can right out of the gate. Instead, they got outshot 23 to four in the first period and gave up five, count them, five goals in the first 15 minutes. They had a timeout and a goaltending change. Yeah, you can do that, Jesse, because they scored five goals. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dallas, come on. Like, you haven't made the conference final since 08. You had a golden opportunity to do it tonight against a guy who's not even really a legit NHL goaltender, and you go out and you lay an egg. So, come on, Dallas. What are you doing? Yeah, Dallas. What are we That's doing? pretty mellow as far as my what are we doing go. Yeah, it, it is. Um, Mal, are you ready? No, I need to be last. Matt, you ready? No, go, Jesse. I'm All right, mine is San Diego Padres fans complaining about their team going for it. Like, how bad do they have to be? They haven't made the playoffs since they were – they made, like – I think they won the division, like, in 2006. That was the last time when they had a Jake Peavy on the team. Like, seriously, do you want to win or do you just want to always be rebuilding? Because they're, like, mad that they traded prospects. It's the stupidest thing ever. Be happy that you're going – 
you're going for it when you've been literally the worst franchise in baseball other than Seattle. Sorry, Mallory. Um, but, like, j- just be happy. You could be the Orioles who just traded their, like, best pitchers away just because, you know, we're still rebuilding. You know, when, when does the rebuilding stop? When, like, why are they so convinced on hit-or-miss prospects that they'd rather, n- like, blow away the chance of a World Series this year for a guy that may or may not work out? When I think San Diego, great chance to win the World Series this year. I don't know about you guys, but they've yeah. got – Really good players on that team. Machado, Tatis, Hosmer. Like, I don't know, like, what their fans are doing. I, what are we doing, San Diego Padres fans? What are we doing? What are we doing? Mallory. Can Matt go? <laughs> no, Mallory, you go. Mallory. I, I mean, I have the one that I'm always going to say until I hear back, which is the West End downtown Phoenix. We're going on <laughs> – <laughs> two weeks of not hearing back about the shampoo and conditioner so um that that's my what are we doing and also um, now we put it on the poll is shampoo gate expiring i mean at this point i'm not gonna hear back right yeah but just put his shampoo gate expiring here's the what are we doing that Here. i have big 10 football like like doing? the whole on again off again thing like okay just stick to something, okay? That's it. Speaking of, and this wasn't in the show plan, but Mallory, Matt, Evan, college football is back. Did you all right. watch? I did Austin not watch Peay. Austin P in Central Arkansas. In Central Arkansas. Let me tell you. We had a game. It was close to the end. There were two amazing drives at the end. And wow. An FCS football football. game before then. Yeah. Whatever the stadium was, we had Matt Berry on the call along with Mike Gold Jr. They knew absolutely nothing about the two schools, which doesn't surprise me at all. Um, It was maybe the worst play I've, I've ever seen on a college football field. I don't know why I spent so much time watching that on Saturday night. That's the problem, okay? <laughs> I watched at least half of the first quarter and half of the fourth quarter, and that is too much time watching FCS football that they probably shouldn't be playing because I don't know how much money they're even making, and so I really don't know why they're endangering anybody's you know, health here. There were fans in the stands, you know, but who cares? College football, whatever. Let's let's just play, you know, ex- exploitation. Like, I, I just don't understand this. Like, whatever, I watched it because I'm a degenerate sports fan, and, and – yeah. Yeah. Apologies to everyone. I'm no, sorry. No, Jesse, Jesse, how you're many times did Scott a... get mentioned on this broadcast? Because he went to Central Arkansas, and I'm sure they just kept hammering that home because that's probably the only game notes they had about this game. Is oh yeah, do you know Scotty Pippen went here? Like, no, I didn't hear it once. Really? No, they had they had deep <laughs> info on these guys. Let me tell you, but they it was definitely. <laughs> Stuff they pulled from the notes on Thursday. I have officially the newest nickname for Jesse Morrison. What is it? Captain Contradiction. Why? What did I do? You're sitting there saying, oh, my God, this football was great, while at the same time saying, they shouldn't be playing. Like, no, they shouldn't. I was predicting just, yourself. The, the football was great thing was a joke. You Also, though, you can – like acknowledge that a game should not have been played and wins like game three. Let like I'm going into a whole other like uh topic right here. But that like the NHL probably should have canceled games that day. They're the only league that didn't. But I enjoyed every minute of Boston getting embarrassed in that game. Like I know it probably shouldn't have happened, but I still enjoyed it. And I think that's what Jesse's saying. Like there's kind of like a morbid enjoyment that goes into these things. Where, like yeah, you know like, like it's it's the same thing with major league baseball. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah, no, like, in a perfect world, they wouldn't have played the game, but we live in the farthest thing from that, so we just have to enjoy the mediocre FCS I remember they were, they were playing hockey after the, after the NBA suspended their season, so. I mean, know, they, this has been an, an extra strong performance by Evan today. The rest of us, not so much, um, I, but, but I, I'm going to say ex, extra strong performance. The, um, Matt has been angry the entire show. Like he angry. Yeah, angry. You just come off as angry. The enti- I don't understand it. You're just always I'm so mad. Angry. 
I'm just, I'm in, I'm in my own mind right now because what is the version of this person? I'm going on vacation on Thursday, and like I just want it to be Thursday, okay? Where are you going? I'm going home. Oh wow! <laughs> and then I'm going to the beach. So don't get COVID. That's all I gotta tell you. I will. Okay, Jesse, what did I do? Why is my performance not good tonight? Your performance is fine, um, especially uh, you've been quick with the polls, which is which is good. Sometimes you're just like, I'm not gonna post that. Matt, you've been terrible. Let me just. Say been, uh, so so wait till the Love Island segment, then I'll I'll wake up. Oh yeah, okay. can we get right into that right now? What, I thought we were going. No no no. no I want I want to hear the hockey segment first. Okay. No 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 no. no. First, we're going into VMAs because Mallory put it next on the show. Oh. And apparently last week when we got off the show, we don't stick to the show plan enough. So we're sticking to the show plan. So Mallory, what did you like with all those pre-recorded music videos on the VMAs, which is what it was, because I watched a you lot know, of them today. You know what was the best part of the VMAs last night? Um, La Ariana Grande coming out and singing with Lady Gaga. She hit all those whistle tones, all those notes. It was incredible while wearing a mask. And um, Gaga and Ariana won five awards, basically swept the VMAs, and you know that it was that was that. Kiki Palmer was supposedly the host, but I joked around that Lady Gaga was really the host because she came out in a new outfit every award, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, it was. Where, it was where did they tape that thing? Was that in the White House? Like, no, can it was. We in, move on it from was Lady Gaga. Can we move on from Lady Gaga? It's it's been like twelve years, like. Get a new pop. He's star. an icon. Get a new pop star. Like I'm, I'm sorry. Like we, we, we why, why is, why are we still like anticipating the the Taylor Swift album? It's been like fifth. Like okay, like, okay, Jesse. But then, but then let's say the same thing about Katy Perry. I'm yeah, I know. I was about to. I was about Perry to have a child now. I was about to say Katy Perry. Like like she's like like why? Like, find a new pop star. I'm sorry. Finally, find you're off of the Katy Perry. I'm not off the Katy Perry thing, but. Some of her recent music hasn't been great, but is it still being promoted on my Apple Music? Yes. I don't know why. And I she's think we can just all agree that Ariana Grande is the best pop star of our generation. I disagree. Jesse, I, I, I like your take this time around, and I'll tell you why. It is that, and I say this very loosely, but when performers go to the Super Bowl, they essentially retire. Right. Lady Gaga performed. Uh, Maroon 5. Like, why is Maroon 5? Like, what have they done? Like, come on. Maroon 5 really? Well, this is only, like, the only one in the past decade that really has done something after the Super Bowl, like something huge, was Bruno Mars coming out with Uptown Funk and then the 24-carat Magic album. Bruno Mars was good. Justin Timberlake was good. Lady Gaga's was good. Justin, Justin Timberlake, Timberlake was good. nothing since. I, no Justin Timberlake slander. No Justin Timberlake. Um, the halftime show wasn't, wasn't great. Yeah, he had a good <laughs> halftime show, and then the Eagles won that game. He's around for 25 freaking years, and he's still putting out hits on the radio. Aren't there talented younger artists? Yeah, BTS, and they are now the number. They have the number one song. Yes, wait, we gotta get Jeremy on the show to talk no, about. No, 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 no. You need to go on Twitter and tweeting BTS because the engagement will go up. All right, put put this on the polls. Should BTS do a Super Bowl halftime show? Yes or no? I'm down. And then also put this on the poll. Will BTS's uh, career rise after doing a Super Bowl halftime show in contrast to other artists? And you have to phrase it like that. Yeah, I, I, I condone both of those polls. You need to, to do the hashtags because you'll get the engagement. Also, so Matt, are you, are you a BTS fan? Wait, before, before he answers that, I just want to say Travis Scott was also a halftime though, and he's been doing pretty well since then. So. I, don't count, I don't count Travis Scott or Big Boy or like... Yeah, uh, they, they, were, they, were, they were side fixtures. Like, Miss like, was a side fixture. Like, the Red Hot Chili Peppers weren't really a... Coldplay really has not done anything since their halftime show. I'm sorry, and I love Coldplay to death. Uh, that's a that's a first. Um, what are you, Jeremy? You're there. Yeah, BTS was the best part of the show. Yeah, we love BTS. Okay, okay. Now get to now 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 get us five thousand votes on a poll, Mallory. Work your work your magic. Yeah, make sure to hashtag BTS. I'm scared. BTS I'm army. scared of the army. I'm so scared of the oh, army. No, they're like they're powerful. Are. 
No, uh, you want, and you, you have to hashtag dynamite too. You might get like a two thousand new followers, and then we would have to like become huge fans of them just so that we can keep I'm the. So, fan of so Mallory, just do I, it. I, I, I want you to play the fact of the day because I researched this fact and put it on the, on the news earlier. So hit me with the fact, the fact of the day. Of the day. We want it now! The fact of the day! So BTS is the first South Korean group to hit number one. One South Korean artist hit number two, and that was Mr. Psy with Gangnam Style back in 2012. Yep. Who could forget it? I love that great song. song. I like that better than Dynamite. I'm sorry, BTS fans. I loved that song. It was a great song. Be, uh, by, the, by the way, Psy has like a ton of hits in Korea. Yeah. Like a ton. Like people don't understand that he was like huge for years before that song. Yeah, I just love people the, the, don't the, listen to foreign music. I mean, every time K-pop, K-pop's okay. huge K-pop, among Americans. Latin yeah, pop is so huge. Because I try and show like foreign versions of other genres that like American people already like and they just don't vibe with it because they can't understand it but if it's k-pop then they don't care all of a sudden like I, I'm sh- sure all of our viewers know that I speak French and as such I listen to a lot of French music whenever I try and show my American friends that music they like never like it so I don't understand the American brain at all I just need to get that off my chest. I listen- okay well I mean does it count that I'm super into British British invasion bands like the Stones and the Who and the Beatles and and I some of those that, bands. I, yeah, I, I guess that counts. But like that, that, that was like the biggest thing in the '60s. Like, if the all, goes, and, and we can all agree that, that that Cascada's "Every Time We Touch" is a pop, and Cascada is. Oh gosh, a, that song is like is it a Cascade. Childhood. Cascada. Cascade is a different guy. Cascade is a yeah. DJ. Oh. No. Yeah. I like Cascade though. Okay, That's all right, gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, okay. I mean, yeah, we also, we've also, with, like, Avicii, like, I guess he's, like, we like Avicii. Avicii. Yeah, like, some of those DJs are not from, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, I might, I might, I might go against this take, but it's, it's whatever, I, I don't know why we're stuck on this. I'm glad that, that, that BTS hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and knocked off WAP. That's we, all I gotta say. You, WAP is the song of the year. Um... I'm just, I'm just saying that right now. I, I, I was driving to hiking yesterday and I listened to that song three times. Not gonna lie, listen to it three times. It's, it is amazing. It was just, Cardi B, Cardi B is one of the best rappers of all time. I'm, I'm just saying. Not better, not better than Nicki Minaj, but he's pretty. Now move on to, I have listed every single best um, athlete at their number. From zero yeah, but to we're not, we're not reading all of these, are we? We are reading number double zero through ten today, and then we're going to keep going until we're done. Hold um, on. I'm, I'm looking at my Twitter timeline, and someone has 171,000 likes, quote tweeting about the song of the year, Rain On Me, and, and someone saying, I have never heard this song in my life. Like, that's you know so what? We don't need – then they're uncultured and don't – like, That's like the worst Ariana Grande song ever. Whoa. It's, it's not really It's not an Ariana Grande song, though. It's a Lady – it's a Lady it's, Gaga song. It's yeah, all Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga's Gaga. average. It's She's got a great voice. Grande. Lady Gaga has a great voice, but I've never thought – most of I, I thought most of her songs are rather uninteresting. Hey, go 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 take a walk and watch A Star Is Born while you're at it. I've seen A Star Is Born, um, but like great movie. Yeah, I'll say I've seen A Star Is Born, but I, I think it's overrated. It's like the fifth time they've made it, and I no, think no, 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 start no. walking, start walking, start walking. Yeah, no Star Is Born disrespect. Like no, oh yeah, oh yeah, just. Well, I don't like Lady Gaga, and this is like a better reason than than Jesse. Like in third grade, I used to carpool to school with my friend, and, and his mom would play Lady Gaga in the car every single day for an entire year. So now I just have PTSD from that. And yeah, poker. Let me get poker. <laughs> And I feel like that's how people feel when they like ride in the car with me because I only play Ariana Grande. Not in my car. <laughs> no chance. Um, Lady Gaga, Poker Face is one of the best songs of all time. I think uh, Glee version. The Glee version of Poker Face. 
Mallory's muted. Number double zero, Robert Parrish. Da da. Number zero, Russell Westbrook. Da da. Number one, the big O, Oscar Robertson. Da da. Here comes all the Yankees players. Number two, Derek Jeter. Da da. Number three, Babe Ruth. Da da. Honorable mention, Allen Iverson and uh, Dale Earnhardt and Dwayne Wade. Number four, Lou Gehrig. Da -da. Number five, Joe DiMaggio. Da -da. Number six, Bill Russell. Da -da. Number seven, Yo Mickey Mantle. Da -da. Number eight, I really wanted to put Obi, but Yogi Berra won 10 World Series. So Yogi Berra. Da -da. Gordy Howe. Da -da. And number 10, we will wrap it up here today, Pele. The soccer star, the greatest of all time. You, know, you, you could have you had a number five. Okay, Come hold on. on. I want to point out a quick flaw in your logic here. So you passed up Jean Beliveau for, I can't even remember who at number four. Jean Beliveau won 10 Stanley Cups, but you put uh, Lou Gehrig or, or no, Barra over Ovechkin because he had 10 championships too. So that's a huge double standard. No, but like, like, there's other qualifications. Yogi Bear was really good. He's, like, the greatest catcher of all time. Look at his numbers. It's number two. Um, what is that? I'm not going to spoil and what number, number five will always love you, Donovan McNabb. I'm not going to spoil what number 23 is, but you should have put the other person at number six if you were going to put the one person. No, that, that, was the, that, was the, that was the big, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to unveil who's at 23. But LeBron, unfortunately, I didn't put here because he's, he's, there's a conundrum with LeBron. Well, then you should have put him at six. No, Bill Russell has 11 championships. No, I'm not going to put LeBron there. But LeBron, but LeBron still said I don't know if you know this, Jesse. Bill Russell is not in the top 200 scorers of all time. Yeah, it was great. To, look at his rebounding numbers. I'm he sorry. He played on a team with like five Hall of Famers. Yeah, but – The Celtics ran the league back then. Jeremy and I, Jeremy and I went over this, and we, we collect as a collective unit. I don't trust you guys. I, I do not trust your committee. basketball knowledge. Blame the committee. Russell is not as good a player as LeBron James. Yes, but we're talking about the success they have had in that number. LeBron played four years in number six. I'm not going to put LeBron in his four years at number six versus if LeBron had worn six from 2003 to now. I would probably put LeBron over Bill Russell because I put LeBron as my second best player of all time, even though I don't, I, I don't want to get into this kind of talk, but I would put, I would put, I put Bill Russell over because LeBron has played a lot of his career in 23. And so that, that's why I do it. Now, Kobe Bryant, another situation because he played a good 10 seasons in 24, not saying that I put him at 24, but there's a good chance Jeff Gordon went in 24, but we'll, but you'll have to see later. You'll have to see later. Um, all right, next, next we should move on though, because I, I'll get to the rest tomorrow. Um, NBA, Mallory, you want to take it away? Sure. Um, today we have the Heat versus Bucks. I think it was 114 to 105 or 106, something like that. Um, you know, the, the Heat are ready to continue winning. They haven't lost a game in the playoffs so far. So we'll see what happens there. Game two is on Wednesday. Uh, the Heat will look to take the series 2-0. and o. And I guess we can give a little bub date. Family members are starting to come out of quarantine and uh, are arriving in the bubble. So we'll look here. Let me see what I have saved. Um, this is a pretty wholesome moment. Oh, I, I did Fred, pick the one you're showing. I'm, I'm so, I'm so Fred happy. Fred and Fleets, uh -huh. kids. So sweet. Let's, let's look at this. Aww. Very sweet. You know, we won't, we won't watch the whole thing. Um, baby Giannis, a.k.a. Liam, was at the game today. <laughs> so sweet. And um, Taco Fall is learning how to swim. <laughs> I love, I love the bubble. It's so great. Like, I just love it. Um, the bubble, the bubble. The way his legs are so long and they're just like kicking. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Can we just have a, like a full season just in, in a bubble? Like, that would be. It might happen. Get ready. 
I don't. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it on the poll. Do Do you think Taco Fall is scared to go down the water slide? I don't. I mean, he. Well, he no, probably not because if he goes down, like he's gonna take up half the water slide. So it's just gonna. He probably just goes, eh, 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 and then like, doesn't make it. And it's probably sad. It, like, he it probably <laughs> sad. Like, like we, should, we shouldn't do him like that. Like, Taco Fall, nice guy. Um, then we've got a game seven. Two Houston. game seven. Soon now. Houston and OKC. And then we My have- Denver Nuggets. My Thunder. No. My Clippers won. Yes, all my teams. Let's see, you could have like three, two, two to three teams max. Mallory, I have, I'm, I have five, I have six teams in the bubble. I've got the Raptors, the Heat, the Nuggets, the Lakers. I don't like. Are you allowed on the Heat bandwagon? I don't think so. No, yeah. You have to be invited. Heat and six. Um. I, I like the – I don't know if I said Clippers, uh, Thunder, Nuggets. It's like seven teams. I, I'm, I'm all in on I'm, – I'm all in on all these teams, and I think all of them have a good shot. You know, CP3, best point guard in the league still. And Denver's winning that game seven. You better believe it. Is he giving exposure to that, to that matchup between the same teams? They're putting that game on ABC, just a heads up. Yeah, it's going to be insane. Well, I liked Stan Van Gundy today, though, on the broad, on one of the broadcasts. I forget which game he was on. I think it was Heat and and what, James and Crowder. The no, the, no. He said he said um, he said that that Denver and and uh, Utah series has turned into J- Jamal Murray versus Donovan Mitchell. It has. It's just the two of them going back and forth. You know, but I like – I just like Denver better. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, maybe it's I don't like just, Utah that much either. I don't like Utah, but, like, I like – it's like Max said. Donovan Mitchell is, like, a superstar, but, like, doesn't – isn't one. It, it just – I don't I don't get it. The NBA has way too – like, their standards for what makes a player a star or superstar are way too low. In the NHL, if Donovan Mitchell's a hockey player, no one is talking about him that way. He's not a superstar. Is he a franchise player? Sure, but he is not. He's not there. Allie, put I, it on the poll. If you're a franchise player, are you a superstar? No. Oh, the answer is no. They're two different things. Jamie Ben is a franchise player. Is he a superstar? No. I know who he is. He won the Art Ross a few years ago, but he's never been a superstar. He's just a really good player. A superstar is like an Ovechkin, Crosby, McDavid, McKinnon, like, like one of the absolute best players in the league. Jamie Ben's never been that, but he has been the star's captain for a long time. He's been one of their best scorers for a long time. Franchise player, not a superstar. Eh, eh, I don't know. Um, all right, well, Mallory wants me to skip this, but I'm not going to because I am super excited. I, I, put, I put on the show plan, skip NASCAR and skip U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah we're, right. not hey, hey, hey. we're not hey, going to. Hey, 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 we're going to talk NASCAR. I'm bringing back the prayer. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, but, you're, you are welcome to leave. And no, talk. because I want to talk about Love Island. So if we do Love Island now, then I'll leave. No. Okay. No, 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 no. We are playing the the prayer. And we're talking about NASCAR because I watched this. Five race. minutes, five minutes of NASCAR talk, Max. That's fine. That's enough. We'll probably do it in less. Streaming. So we want to thank you all for these mighty machines that you brought before us. Thank you for the knowledge. He didn't thank the Lord for the Chevrolet. Yeah, I did. I just I was thinking of that too. Thank you for Sunoco Refi. Thank you for Yeah, let's go racing. Okay, William Byron, it was amazing. My favorite driver, he's finally won. That was a great race. It was a great, 
last lap. I thought he had lost it to Truex, but he came back and took the lead, and it was just amazing. And he's in the playoffs, and these playoffs, I'm telling you, are going to be absolutely insane. Uh, stop. It's going to come down to Hamlin and Harvick on the final lap in Phoenix, and may the best driver win in a photo finish. Don't count oh, Brad. Dylan. Yeah, Austin Dillon. Don't Jimmy count Brad. Jimmy Johnson's not in it. Um, no, in his last season. Last full-time season. He should just race again next season. What, what's he got to lose? I think he should, too. Kyle Busch has not won a race through 26 races, which is pretty bleeping. Don't count him out, though. Incredible that he has not won. Don't like, count him out. Like, he's the best driver in the sport, and he hasn't won a race. Like, that's that's incredible. But, um, yeah. So, I, I think 16 is way too many for their playoffs because that's literally – three quarters of the field that actually races in the race. There's 40 drivers, but let's be real. There's only like 30. Okay, if there's 16 NBA teams that make the playoffs out of 30, then that's more than – I I don't don't have a problem with that. But I'm going to read off the – who's in Harvick, Hamlin, Kozlowski, Logano, Elliott, Truex, Blaney, Bowman, Byron, Dillon, Custer, Almirola, Boyer, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, Matt DiBenedetto, I've got my money on Hamlin because Harvick only wins at one mile races uh, or one mile tracks. And I think that, I think Hamlin wins, but I got a close second for Keselowski. I think somebody in the, like, you know, an Alex Bowman or a Ryan Blaney or even a Kyle Busch could surprise. And yet the two most talked about drivers this year were Ryan Newman and Bubba Wallace. So neither of them made it. Unfortunately, Uh, I was, or, I mean, like, Ryan Newman, I, I'm, I'm glad he's safe, but, like, he's never been my favorite driver, so I don't really care that he's not in the playoffs. But I, I would have liked to see Bubba. Bubba Wallace had a chance to win that race on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, great. And I was mad that he didn't. Yeah, I was, I was hoping for him or Byron. I mean, Byron's my favorite driver, and this was his first win. Fun fact, Byr- William Byron learned how to drive, drive a motor race car by doing iRacing. So, mm-hmm. pretty, yeah. pretty wild. Um, I wonder if anybody's asked him about the pool boy scandal. The what? The pool boy scandal. I don't want to know what that is. Have you seen his title sponsor of his car? Or his, his big sponsor? It's Exalta. Oh. It's uh, Liberty University. Let's Exalta, but Liberty sponsored him on Saturday. <laughs> I was like, I was like, they might have, I don't know, like, it's contractually obligated, but like, I was like, they might have wanted to go with Exalta this weekend. <laughs> You know, you know one of the one of the cars, uh, Corey LaJoy, His sponsor is a political action committee that has that has Trump twenty twenty written on his car. Oh like, no! Yeah, yeah, and apparently the one race he like crashed, and some people on Twitter were making fun of it. So, yeah. All right. Well, U.S. Open started today. Tennis wise, oh, Coco golf. golf lost. That's all I know. Coco Golf lost. Yep, that was that was what I was going to talk about. I, I won't I won't update the field because I know y'all don't care. But Coco Golf, sixteen year old, she lost to Anastasia Sevastova, and it, it was honestly like golf played really well. And and this 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 Sevastova was the thirty one seeds, and golf's unseeded. So like, it's, is golf still unseeded. I don't know. She's I mean she's sixteen. Like give it give it two or three years, and she's winning a bunch. If I, I get the feeling there's a little bit of stage parent tennis thing going on. If you guys don't know history of tennis, there's been a lot of like way too much involvement from the parents, dance moms kind of stuff. Yeah, I was about to say dance moms. Dance mom kind of stuff, baseball dad kind of thing um, with tennis. And it's like, it's just a lot of pressure from the parents. And, you know, they go pro at like 15, 16, which is kind of weird. Um, but but the Coco Golf made it to the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, correct? Yeah, I believe so, or it was last year's U.S. Open. I don't remember. I'm gonna check, but but she made it pretty far. So the they played the Australian Open this year. Yeah, it was in January. I called in your show, uh, bringing play by play. Oh yeah, that's right. I I remember. Yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. Like this year is so crazy. Um. All right. Well. Enough of that talk. Fourth round at the Australian Open. 
in singles. Third round at U.S. Open, fourth round in. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I know she went far at the U.S. Open too. Uh, yeah, that's all, only third round though. So I'm just excited to see what Serena will do because this is a very watered down field. It's a watered down field on both sides, but it's an extra watered down field on the women's side. There's a lot of Americans, by the way. Yes, there are a lot. There's like an extra amount of Americans that you don't normally see because American tennis has been pretty much non-existent on the men's side since Agassi retired. And basically on the women's side, it's like Serena and Venus with a couple of um, with a couple of people, you know, make like Sloane Stevens was supposed to be really, really good. She has one Grand Slam. So I don't know. I think that I, I, I just think it's Serena's tournament. She's got to win it. This is her last chance. She should. She should yeah, and uh, Andreescu's not playing the defending champ. So no, she'll... neither is neither is the world number one. Like it's a it is a water. Osaka's playing though. So like, Osaka uh, is playing and she's a champion. So we'll see. Yes. Um, Love just... Island. So Love Wait, let me go um let me set up this okay we're always on the fly it's like everything's on the fly love island is back the u.s version is back for season two i've been told by multiple people it's not as good as the uk version mallory go watch the uk version when i have time i will but this is a commitment enough it's on like six days a week it's ridiculous. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But the days that it's on right after Big Brother, it just works perfectly. You know, Big so, Brother. Yeah. So, Love Island, we've got. Sh should we go over the cast, Matt, or how do we look, want look, to do Let this? me just give my opening observation okay. of this. Love Island airs on CBS. This is, the per this is the quintessential CBS show. Fake drama and not enough, uh, how you say, uh, love, if you know what I mean. They make him sleep in the same bed, but they won't make him, but they won't let him go past second base. No, that's on the different, that's on, that's on Too Hot to Handle. No, that's Love Island too. They're sleeping together every night and they're like, well, yeah, they're in the same bed, but they, they're allowed to do whatever. I mean, it, they don't because they're in a room with everyone else. Yeah, that, that's, but, that's, that's what I don't understand. They're staying in a hotel and they have to sleep in the same room with like 15 yeah, people. Yeah, that's just like what they did last year. But America, um, coming up, America will vote like for their favorite couples and those couples will get like a private room for the night. But let me just say that I think the drama is way too drawn out on this show. And they literally tease what going they literally wait minute tease first minute of the next segment of the show like that's that's just cbs being cbs i'm sorry like that's that's the only thing i don't like however the cast all the men all the women are beautiful people yeah i mean i agree Every, everyone's pretty good looking on the show um i think uh, there are some good matches going on right now with who's coupled up um I like what they always call it an Irish law firm with um, McKenzie. Connor McKenzie. Connor McKenzie. I think that's funny. They're, they're a great match. Um, McKenzie, uh, Arizona native, I think. I, I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you're in a D backs game. Um, quick thing on Love Island the silicone is flowing. What? What? The lock. <laughs> Are you saying kind of like uh, plastic, plastic surgery. surgery? I mean, I don't know. Oh, okay. Hey, well, well, wait, wait, wait. He is right. One of the characters, or characters, one of the cast members, they are characters. Kirsten, With, Kirsten and Mackenzie have a lot of plastic surgery. Well, Kirsten literally admitted that she just got plastic surgery yeah. or uh, breast implant surgery um, specifically. So I was thinking about those. <laughs> anyway um kirsten and carrington are both like the stuck up like obnoxiously good looking people and it just works time out time out carrington should not be on this show he made he er, he got his company four million dollars in sales in a year that man pro if, if he commissioned like if he has a 10 percent commission on that 
That's four hundred thousand dollars on top of what he makes. Well, I hope he just needs, he's trying money. to find love. Just because you're making money doesn't mean you don't want to find. He's love probably love the richest guy on that yeah. show, and a lot of those guys look rich. You know who I don't like after recent incidents is James. James has shown his true colors. Um, Moira went on a date with um, one of the new guys, and James was just acting a fool. You know and just really not how you want to act if you want to keep the girl and um good game james how about that moira deserves better i'm sorry moira, moira deserves what who's the, what's the new guy's name with the with the freckles calvin or calvin Kate? yeah like, moira deserves calvin james is gonna be sent home he can't take the pressure of big game james how about that I think Jeremiah um, has to go too. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah, a... I mean, I don't know how. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Was a good friend of mine. Oh. You gotta watch out for guys whose names start with J, especially Jesse. Those are the real troublemakers. The ones your mom warned you about, you know. Johnny and Sally is a really good couple. Now the, now the E names, the E names. That's where it's at. I think, think I, I think I reversed that, but but you yeah. know, it is what it is. But you know. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit crazier over the years, so, I mean. Um, so, anyway, back to Love Island. We have... Um, Love Island! <laughs> who else we have? What do you, okay, Matt, what do you think? Do you think the connection between Justine and Ray, or Trey, um, is a little bit forced? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know why people I mean, are named I'm... Trey? What? You know why people are named Trey? Why? Why? Because they're the third, and tray is three. That's why people say hits the tray. I mean, I'm glad that he didn't pick um, what's her name over Justine, just because I think. Caitlin, that, okay, Caitlin deserved better though. She's yeah. very. She was very pretty, like one of the best looking girls on the show. But she just didn't have a connection with anyone. Like I wish she could have stuck around and waited for the new guys. But she just like. She was just kind of like trying to like you know talk to Trey just so that I am not a Justine fan. I, I I'm sorry, um, but I I do think Trey. Okay, the weird part was Trey was like the first person to show up, and Justine kind of gave the hint that she wanted to couple up with him. And, oh, that was Jeremiah. Uh, no, I no. Oh no, but, no, no, yeah, no, no, Jeremiah was the first guy there. Justine stepped forward. Jeremiah chose um, Sally. Yeah. And Trey stole Sally. No, Johnny. Well, well, Johnny. Uh, that's the most unique name on this show. Not Carrington, but Sally. See oh, I know people named Carrington, but I know. Breaking Carrington. news. Oh, okay. Breaking news. Vin Scully is on Twitter. Yeah, that, that was, that's not breaking news. That was news from like a couple days ago. Okay, well, Vin is on Twitter. He has joined Twitter Twitter at the ripe young age of 92 years old. He's almost 93. Vin is back. So back to Love Island. <laughs> um, tonight, they're going to be playing one of those, like, games that they have to play. And in the previews, we saw Mackenzie getting a little jealous because um, – who she was again? Connor? Who? Mackenzie? Mackenzie? Yeah, yeah, the law firm, the Irish law firm. Yeah, Mackenzie and Connor. Um, Connor has to kiss some other girls in the game, and Mackenzie's not going to like that. So we'll see what happens there. That's right. it for Love Island. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I mean, You've got a minute to, to say whatever you want to say about hockey, and then we got to go. I'm going to okay. time this, okay? I'm going to fly through this. So Bruins are eliminated, thank God. Uh, no one here wanted them to win. They're out in five, just like two years ago against the Lightning, exactly the same situation played out. They win game one, lose four in a row, they're out in five. Colorado forced a game six, so that'll happen in two days. Uh, tomorrow we got Vegas and Vancouver game five. Vancouver's on the ropes. Vegas should be able to take out. Leonard's going to start because Flory played last night and was not great. Got the win, but still, save percentage under 900. And then Flyers Islanders game five. Got I think three seconds. I think New York's going to close that one out, too. So we should be all done with the second round by tomorrow. 
Uh, by Wednesday, by when or do the start? Wednesday when Dallas Colorado Game Six happens, unless yeah. Colorado wins and then we get our first Game Seven of the playoffs. If, yeah, know, we want a Game Seven. Yeah, I'm going for a Game Seven. Um, at least one. At least one. The other thing I wanted to talk about is there's some coaching searches. In Five, the four. Right now. Stop it. I'm gonna start with the Capitals because this is fresh news. <laughs> um, apparently, they like Peter Laviolette. They have interviewed him. Good. And no one else. So Laviolette, veteran coach, would be a good fit for this team. Honestly, they got a mostly veteran roster. And he gets teams to the cup finals. He's done that everywhere he's coached. He did it in Carolina, won the whole thing in 06. But it seems like that's where they're going to go. And Florida also has announced a short list for candidates. And they've got some interesting names on there. Peter Shirelli is the one guy who's been a GM before. Uh, I have a hard time believing he's going to get the job. But they also spoke to Kevin Weeks from NHL Network, who – to my knowledge, would be the first black GM in NHL history, which would be really cool. Eddie Olchek, who has been a coach in the National Hockey League before, never a GM. Obviously, you know him. No, oh, I want him to be on. No. <laughs> Again, no GM experience, so it would be an interesting call. And then Scott Mellenby, who we already talked about uh, on a, uh, the show a couple weeks ago. So that's the short list. One of those guys is going to be the next GM. Chris Jury was in the running and dropped out. So it's going to be one of those four guys. And uh, it'll be interesting to see which direction they go in. Also, yeah. exciting. Dale Talon the Panthers. That's yeah, all I Dale Talon. Yeah, no, I, that's a topic for, I guess, another day. But you know, he's, you know. not, he's not employed by an NHL team. So we don't need to talk about that. Yeah, better to okay. not better to not give him the public publicity. All right, I'm gonna read news, quick bachelor news or bachelorette news. That's the promo for the bachelorette. It will premiere October 13th on ABC. You see Claire and you see this thing. That's Dale's um, leg. That's and, Dale's leg. And uh, Hannah Ann, Madison, Victoria Fuller, yep. and Kelsey were all in Santa Barbara together this week. We love it. The final four that deserved better than Peter. That's Girl right. Power. They Girl were power. all like, and it's so funny, like, because Kelsey and like Hannah Ann are like really good friends now, and that whole like champagne. It's, it's just proof that like the champagne thing was just like the producers, and after that, after that happened, they were probably just like, yeah, we we just did that for the drama, and they were like, okay, sorry. And then, like, we're cool. Um, all right. And poor, poor my Ken is up in Canada. Yeah, my Ken is up in Canada. I'm a big fan of my Ken. I like I, I follow her on Instagram. Um, all right, so we're going to start with this poll from three days ago. Uh, is Ariana Grande Mallory's best friend? 82% yes. Um, Who you, voted no? Uh, I don't know. I, I accidentally voted yes. Um, how do you eat your PB and J? Crusts on seventy five percent. Crusts off twenty five percent. We got twenty votes on that. Um, not at all. Where where was the not at all option? I I don't I don't consider picky eaters and and their feelings. I'm sorry, Mallory. Peanut butter and jelly is good. Yeah, like it's at the it's like the best sandwich. It's it's not the best sandwich of all time, but it's the most it's the easiest to go to sandwich that's gonna you know hit the spot. You know, peanut butter and jelly. You, you like you ate that growing up. Even Mallory at some point has probably had it. Like, it's just iconic. Nope, nope she hasn't. Nope. Trust me. Wow. Should should uh, should I banish people from my fantasy football league who don't want to pay the $5 buy-in? 67% yes. Um, it is, is it a lose-lose situation for any fantasy football commissioner? 78% yes. Um Dwayne Bacon or current stage Michael Jordan in one on one? Oh, no. you told you're so stupid. 100% Michael Jordan. Um, Nicholas Batum or current stage Michael Jordan in one on one? Michael Jordan. Bismack Biombo or current stage Michael Jordan in one on one? Jordan. Um, Graham or Jordan? Same situation. Devontae Graham. 57% Jordan. Willie Hernan Gomez. Or Jordan in one on one, current Jordan. 71% Jordan. Um, Caleb and Cody Martin, or current stage Michael Jordan in one on two. We've got current stage Michael Jordan at 100% and Martin Brothers at 0%. Um, Jalen McDaniels, current stage Michael Jordan. We got Jordan. Um, Michael Jordan or Malik Monk, current stage Michael Jordan. Uh, 62%. Matt, your audio. Your audio. 
I muted him. Terry Rozier or current stage Michael Jordan in one-on-one? -on -one? 86% for Jordan. Kobe Simmons or current stage Michael Jordan in one-on-one? 100% -on -one? Jordan. Ray Spaulding or current stage Michael Jordan in one-on-one? -on -one? We've got Jordan at 100%. Uh, PJ Washington or current stage Michael Jordan at one on one. Hundred percent current stage Michael Jordan. And the last one of these, Cur Cody Zeller or current stage Michael Jordan in one on one. We've got eighty six percent Michael Jordan. And to tonight's polls, should the Major League Baseball trade deadline be after the season? Sixty seven percent of those who voted say no. Was the BTS? Hey, hey, Matt, 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 Matt. Start over at uh, should the trade deadline be after the season? Why? It cut out. It didn't cut out for me. Are you are you recording, Mallory? No, I forgot. Okay, yeah, we'll keep. The trade deadline be after the season in Major League Baseball. Sixty-seven percent say no. Was a huge talker. My bleached hair. Seventy-five percent yes. Is shampoo gate expiring? Seventy-five percent yes. Was the BTS performance the best part of the VMA? Fifty-seven percent say votes. Yes. What? Yeah, by the way, the, I asked for two polls about BTS and the Super Bowl, and uh, poll, poll, the poll worker um, did not put those up yet. The second one was the good one. Oh, Mallory, I praise you for being quick with the polls today. What, what poll did I miss? The, the will, will, BTS, will BTS take oh, off more right. when if they perform at the Super Bowl? There's no way they can take off more than like what they are already at. Yes. Yeah, no, but in contrast to Katy Perry and Justin Timberlake and Lady, or Justin uh, Timberlake just hasn't put out an album. Yes, he has. Since the Super Bowl, he yeah. put one out right around the Super Bowl, and that's why he was on the Super Bowl. Then because Jimmy Fallon's his best friend. Um, by the way, put this on the poll. Do, should do we deserve Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake? in 2020 because yeah. you really should like like it's jimmy, it's Fallon, like what are you doing? No, no. jimmy it's fallon good. if you want my viewership bring justin timberlake on i'm sorry enough with your with your no jimmy fallon's not good anymore late tv sucks it's double zero a number 57 percent say yes all right those are the polls uh follow us on twitter at the letter y so serious show and we will see you tomorrow good night canada